All right, well, uh, I want to welcome Brianne Kirkpatrick, uh, founder of Watershed DNA to the podcast. Welcome, Brianne. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Brad good to talk to you this morning, Bradley. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Yes, I think the last time we talked, it was early on in the pandemic, and um, we recorded another podcast. And it seems like a lot has changed and not much has changed all at the same time. <laughs> not true if it feels that way for you. It's, uh, it's, the, it's the worst uh, cataclysm ever. It's the worst end of the world scenario you could ever think of. It, the pandemic could just, I, I, to go on, it's, to back up exactly what you said and agree with what you just said, it seems like it's gone on forever, but it's, but when I look back and realize it's been two years, it's, it, it's amazing. I, I don't, I, it's the most confusing time era, just to validate what you said. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think we're coming out of it. So let's, uh, let's be hopeful for that, right? Yeah, it feels like it is in a lot of ways. And one of the reasons that you brought me on today to talk is that we've had some new things come out in the world of DNA discoveries. A big, uh, a big one being the first major large scale research study on people that have a DNA discovery from a consumer test. And I think you wanted me to talk a little bit about that. Right, yeah, yeah, let's get, we can get right into it. Yes, yeah, so, um, and, and after we talk about that, we could also talk about what's going on in your world and how our two worlds are intersecting. Um, yeah. But before we do that, I let me share a little bit about this is a, a group of researchers that I'm a part of. It's being led by Christy Garini out of Baylor. And this spring, so spring of 2022, we released a research paper in the American Journal of Human Genetics. And this was a study conducted online via a survey of over 23,000 people who have tested at Family Tree DNA, which is one of the consumer DNA test companies like Ancestry or 23andMe. And it was a survey sent out in 2020 asking people about their experiences of getting a surprise or unexpected discovery when they did a consumer test. And there was so much, so much data to come out of this research that we're still working on studying it. And and figuring out you know, what, what does this mean and, and how do we share this with the public so that it's helpful for everybody involved, whether you're the person going for a test or a family member who ends up being impacted by testing on somebody else, and then for professionals working with people who maybe get a test as a holiday gift or a birthday present and you know, out of nowhere they have an unexpected discovery and what's that mean? So the, the research has shown that it's very common to get an unexpected discovery from a consumer test. 61% of the people who responded to the survey reported making a discovery from their test that either directly impacted them or someone related to them. And that's a pretty significant number because that this is just capturing a moment in time uh, most people who responded to the survey had gotten a surprise discovery within the past one to five years. So these are all new discoveries, relatively speaking. And okay. um, do, yeah. Do you, uh, yeah, do you mind if I, if I ask a couple questions here? So yeah. 61%, now this isn't 61% and I, and, and, and I guess I'm, I'm projecting my experience. This isn't 61% of the people found out in my experience, I found out, I discovered that my parent wasn't a biological parent. This is not just that. This includes anyone who found something irregular than what they understood in, in their, their, their family tree uh, when they got their test results. Is that correct? This, this is inclusive of anyone. Okay. Yeah. So the so, question that was asked is, did you learn something new about yourself or a relative okay. using the genetic relative finder service? So that's when a company matches you with other people in their database and then reports back to you who's, who's a genetic relative and how closely related they are okay. to you. Okay. Yeah. So, 
so uh, 61%, that's three out of five people who took this test found an irregularity. And when we're discussing irregular, ir irregularities, I don't want to be over assumptive. I'm going to make a, a couple of examples and, and I'm sure you have more to add to that, but uh, maybe you found out in my case that a parent wasn't, uh, you had a different biological parent than you thought, but this could also be uh, a cousin. You found a, a cousin you didn't know you had, um, that, that kind of thing, is that correct? Yes, and you're actually most likely to discover a new cousin or a more distant relation than you are somebody close if you do the testing and get a surprise discovery. So in terms of um, one of the questions that, that we got response to was what type of discovery did you make? And it was most common to discover a, relation, a new relative outside of your nuclear family and grandparent level of the family. And um, so a cousin or aunt and uncle or a more distant relation to that. Okay. The, Which... most, the next most common discovery was discovering a new sibling, whether they were a half or a full sibling that you weren't aware of or a different biological grandparent. And then the less likely to discover was um, a new biological parent or a child that you didn't know of. So that's what we think of when we were talking about NPEs is that parent-child level. So most people who make a surprise discovery are outside of that immediate parent-child discovery, which okay. has its own host of you know, questions and complications because then at that point, how do you share? When do you share? Who do you share it with? You know, there's different, different questions that come up if your discovery is involving other people and not yourself. Right. And, and so, uh, you know, the first thought that comes to mind is statistically, this makes sense, right? You, we have way more cousins than, than we do siblings and, and so on. So that, that makes sense. But I, I think this statistic that we're talking about shows, it, and to your point, that Somewhere in, in somewhere in this list, when uh, these sixty-one percent, when you find a cousin or a grandparent, that means somewhere someone probably discovered <laughs> the parent, the child-parent relationship, the the NP discovery. So, uh, one of the things that I, when I when I teach and, and do my sessions, that I try to get people to understand is this affects everybody. When 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 we make our own NP discovery, it's so traumatic that we, we recoil our focus inward and we become the center of the entire, and in a lot of ways we are, but it narrows our vision to the impact it's having on the people around us. And I think this, this statistic is important to keep in mind that it, it, isn't, it doesn't just affect us, it does affect the entire family dynamic. And we're starting, we, I feel like we have, um, we're starting to understand more about the experience of the NPE and how that can be traumatic for some people and what that looks like. What we don't have a lot of understanding yet is how to help everyone else around the NPE support them. And that's a lot of the work that I feel passionate about is trying to understand how all of the different people involved in the discovery are experiencing that discovery so that we can help them to help the person, the NPE, or if it's an adoptee that's seeking out biological family using DNA testing or um, a person who's donor conceived and is searching for the identity of their donor, how do we help everyone around them so that we are not uh, furthering any trauma and helping everybody heal and help help the the family and the relationships move forward the best that they can. Yeah, I, so I, I don't want to roll over what you just said. So what you said is critical. The two components are to not cause any more damage and to help people begin to heal. And I, I love I love that you included both those because they are both critical. We can heal all we want, but if we don't stop the bleeding. Uh, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. So uh, I, I love that. So I, I appreciate you 
you know, talking about this study, um, can is there a way that it can, it can be viewed by our listeners? Yes. So um, right now, the there's I have a PDF that I'm happy to email to anyone who wants to see the actual paper. But we'll be talking about it in June, and during your NPE retreat that you're That's right. um, working on. And I'll go into the research in a little bit more detail and have time for anyone who's attending that day to ask questions and try to tease out what's the important information. Because as you can imagine from 23,000 surveys, um, there's a lot, a lot of information. Um, sure. Yeah, this is only just a little piece of it. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so you just made reference i want i want to give some information out here the second annual npe awareness virtual retreat is next month in june we have it every june uh this this year it's june 2022 uh and brianne's going to be pre, pre, you're going to be presenting and you're going to talk more uh in depth about this study uh and i'd like to uh, by the way you can get information uh, on the retreat on my website, thebradleyhall.com. And uh, Brianna, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to discuss, um, once you extract this information and after the retreat, if you want, we can do, uh, we can put a blog post on my website and uh, try sure. to get that out as well. Yeah, so. yeah. there's a, a lot that we learned from this first set of analysis from the data and there's still more coming. So I'm definitely wow, happy to help, help share what we know and keep it going. Yeah, that's exciting. I, I, I appreciate you doing this work. It's, uh, uh, there's just not enough information out there. And it's studies like these that are, that are really going to help us move, move forward. We've done a lot of work, but we've got a lot more to do, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, speaking, speaking of work, uh, and, and more work to do. Um, I, I don't know whether I, I'm so excited. I don't know whether I don't want to steal your thunder. Uh, so I will, I'll let you talk about it, but I'm so excited about our collaborative project. Um, you want to talk a bit about that? I am as well. Yes. So I created a, a curriculum for a course that's called writing is healing. And this came from, um, a personal realization of how helpful writing has been to me and my own healing journey for different challenges in my life and also how helpful it has been to all of the different people I've interacted with over the past six to seven years through Watershed DNA, both the private practice and through the website and the online groups. And what I realized in working with other people is that working, um, writing out parts of your story and sharing what your life experiences have been can be a really important piece to healing and moving forward when there's been something happened that happened to you or a series of things that have happened to you or just living life in general. What, what I have taken away from working with many different people who've decided to share parts of their story anonymously on the Watershed DNA blog is that it can be really helpful to have someone um, asking the questions to prompt the writing to begin. And so that's where all of this came from. And the writing course, it's timed to take about eight weeks. And um, the, there are many different parts of it. So the, uh, an overarching goal of, of the course is for someone who could really use the time for themselves to sit back and, and write out some things that have been on their mind. Um, it's it's a, a timed course on your own schedule. And I'm really hoping to help people get the freedom to try some different writing techniques. So some of the um, course will walk walk you through different ways, different styles of writing, different ways of writing. So, um, you know, maybe you're drawn to writing novels, but you want to try out um, creative writing through poetry, or you want to try out um, writing a personal narrative or an essay. I uh, introduce different types of writing 
that are something that you can experiment with and just see see what it's like to try a different type of writing than you've ever had before. And then a, um, a piece of it that comes later on in the course is what to do and, and why writer's block happens. And that's something that I've experienced personally. It's extremely frustrating to feel like you want to write something, you know you can write something, you know that once you write it, you'll feel better, it will be a piece of healing, but you do, there's something there. What is that roadblock? Why can you not get there? So um, one of the weeks will focus on, you know, dissecting what, what is writer's block and why do we get it? And is there a way, what's the way around it? So I'm, I'm excited to bring this to other people because I've, I've had, had a writing coach myself. My friend Rachel has been a really helpful writing coach for me in the past. And I uh, want to help share that with other people as well. And once a month, we will have a live Zoom call for anyone enrolled in the course or anyone considering enrolling in the course, just to check in on progress and have people share about their breakthroughs and what their struggles are in their current writing journey and really use it as not a replacement for any other type of um, any, any other type of healing piece of the journey, but in addition and have it have writing be an addition to the healing. Well, that's awesome. I think this course is absolutely amazing. And I didn't know that you had a, a portion about writer's block. I, I might be able to use that uh, with my PhD program because Lord knows there are uh, a lot of times where I hit that writer's block. So I'll have to look into that as well. Um, but I, I think this, I love this course. I loved it when we first talked about it. And I, um, there, there is so there is something cathartic about getting it out of our head, whether whether we're talking about it, whether we're writing it, whether we're we, we do it through music, uh, painting, some type of artistic expression is critical. It's it's like stagnant water. If we let it we let it marinate in our head too long, it can it can turn sour on us. And and the only thing the only way to get through that is to get it out. And this is certainly an amazing way to do that. Um, and so I, I want to let everyone know that if you're interested in Brianne's course, to go to my website at thebradleyhall.com, look for Writing is Healing with Brianne. There are two ways that you can uh, participate in the course. You can either buy the course outright, or you can sign up for a monthly membership, which uh, in the month of May, we're running a special. If anyone who joins uh, with a monthly membership uh, gets access to the course for free and other courses as well and all the community discussion groups. Uh, and there are two different subscriptions we have. One is for NPEs and one is for non-NPEs. So uh, we're really excited about that. Um, I, I appreciate I appreciate everything you're doing, Brianne. And I, I think this course is amazing. I'm really excited to see uh, how many pe people participate, what kind of feedback we get. I am as well. And I'm hoping that people will really consider the membership way to join because my course is only one in a growing library of courses. And there's a lot of overlap that I see between my course and what someone could get from doing a diff different course in the series. So if, if you're listening and considering, do I just do one or do I try it all? Is, is it possible for someone to join as a member or to take one course and then switch over their membership? That's that's something that I, I can't do. Yeah, so the membership gives them, if they join between now and May 31st, whichever membership, right? NPE should join the NPE membership, the NPE experience. It's it's custom tailored for the NPEs. Uh, but the other membership is a, is, a, is a gold membership, gold level membership. Uh, it has almost, almost everything except for the NPE specific uh, items in it. And once you're a member, then you have access to all the courses and all the discussion groups uh, and even, um, you know, discounts on upcoming events, the MPE experience, they get, they actually get free access to quarterly events and to the MPE, uh, the annual virtual summit. So there's, there's a whole lot with it. They, we, we currently have three courses, uh, on the, on the platform, we're expecting to release three more this summer, uh, Surviving Narcissistic Abuse, Family Systems, and Cultivating a Heart-Led uh, Practice. 
and and we're working on uh, anywhere from six to 12 more for 2023. So uh, the membership, in my opinion, is the only way to go. We, uh, I wanted, I, my, my vision is to design it. It's the Netflix for, for mental and, and, and holistic health. Uh, I just want to have a smorgasbord of, you know, menu options where people can find what they need, no matter where they're at in their journey. Uh, and that, that's the goal is we, we create a wide array of courses. So, um, and, and I, again, I'm excited that, that you're a part of that. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Well, you know, the, the pandemic has forced us all to be a little bit more on the internet and use different ways to connect. And so right. maybe that's actually a silver lining of the whole thing is that we're all a lot more comfortable realizing that there's so many different ways that we can use an online platform to still stay connected and connect with other people. Yeah, that that's part. great. It's yeah, it's a great point, and and I think in addition to that, the pandemic has also we've all taken a step back and 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 realized something isn't right. Uh, what we've been doing up to this point seems that that life has just gotten faster and faster and uh, unhealthier and unhealthier, and we, we need to make some changes, some modifications, and I think that starts with psychoeducation, understanding, and and doing uh, things like your writing class and. Uh, and, and, and working things out, but taking care, better care of ourselves, it, I think has moved to the forefront during the pandemic. And if it hasn't, for anybody listening that hasn't, uh, I want you to think about it because it probably should. The statistics, the mental health statistic, statistics for the pandemic speak for themselves and I don't have them right in front of me, but they're easily uh, Googleable. Is that a word? Is Googleable a word? We will make it a word right now. <laughs> Googleable. <laughs> yeah, Googleable. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're doing here. We're hoping to build a community where we can all, a positive community mm -hmm. where we can all support each other uh, in, our, in our journey. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited about what we're doing. I am too. Bradley, you're really creating a great thing. I think that social networks, the bigger social networks have their place and role in people's lives, but it's always uh, really important to know that you have a safe space you can go to uh, separate from social networking. And I'm really glad that you've created that space for people who are MPEs and, and everyone in their world, really. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I, I thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, social media does have its place, but it seems, it seems that it quickly de-evolves to the lowest common denominator and that reduction can, can be stressful and not healthy at times. And, and this community uh, where we're just all raising each other up, I, you know, where, where, uh, would you? How do we start this? Let's 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 roll back around the top where we're not doing any damage, uh, any further damage, but we're continuing to heal, and that's what we're trying to do here. Yeah. Sure. Uh, anything you want to add before we go? Just that I'm looking forward to the future, especially um, June, connecting with you and and everybody else online for the uh, MPE retreat. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I, I appreciate you sharing your study with us. Uh, again, every, everyone listening, uh, you, you have to connect with us. You, you've got to, you, you've got to go to my website. You got to find us. We, uh, we have the, the MP virtual retreat, second annual NP awareness virtual retreat coming up in June. Brian's course is available on my website, thebradleyhall.com. And uh, we have subscription options and all kinds of courses, a lot of things going on. So catch up with me. If you have any questions, send uh, me a message. Um, and Brian, I appreciate you being here and sharing everything. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. I am as well. All right. Take care. You too.